<laughs> so, I would say, before we can talk about what we can't talk about, how would you best describe your characters? Okay, everybody say where you're from when you first talk. Wilson Morales, blackfilm.com. Yeah. So, so I was going to say, how would you best describe your characters? Okay. And, and tell everybody to be a little quieter. All right. Okay, so I play Mariah Dillard. Mariah Dillard is a New York City councilwoman. And uh, she grew up in Harlem, born and bred in Harlem. As my friend Audrey Schmaltz says, born, bred, toasted and butted in. Toasted and jammed in Harlem. But she has gone away. I have a whole backstory that's not in the thing, and I won't tell you about that. But she has gone away, highly educated, has decided to come back to the city. She, she loves New York City. She lives for Harlem. And so what her... her mission is, is that she wants to make sure that the culture and history of Harlem, the artistry of Harlem, uh, remains intact and polished as a gem, even as in the 21st century, Harlem starts to change into something else. And so her whole thing is about Harlem, the residents of Harlem, and, and therefore uh, keep, you know, keeping that legacy alive. My cousin, my first cousin, is Cornell Stokes, and we, we grew up together. I'm a little bit more mature. I mean, I'm a few years older than him, but he is my cousin. And as most old American fortunes um, are, the, it's based on that gray area of what was legal and what was the, where the rules were bent. And so there are some people that think that uh, you know we are an establishment in Harlem, an established family. Some people would probably say that we got there through nefarious activities. <laughs> My name is Mahershala Ali. I play uh, Cornell Cottonmouth Stokes. And, um, you know, as many of you know, because you've seen it. But I feel like Cottonmouth is an ambitious man who missed his calling. And I think that that provides a lot of texture in, in going about telling the story and being on this journey. Um, it's somebody who's had to accept and embrace um, the position he holds um, and, and embrace living in a world where some things are legal and some things are not and how those things kind of marry together. Um, there's this theme of family that that um, plays a, 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 a part, a very strong part uh, throughout the course of the story. And um, But he's one who is ambitious and is trying to find his way in the world. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, I, I think it's a phenomenal piece. I think it's, it got to work with some remarkable people. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited for people to see it. I'm Scott Hoover with People, um, with People Magazine, Scott. So what I loved about this was how much it really leaned into Harlem and that community and, and the richness that is there. And you know, it wasn't afraid to really use that and make it almost a character. What did that element of this project mean to you guys, even though it's a superhero project? It's got this real world grounding to it. Well, that excited me about it. First of all, Cheo is a, a brilliant writer, and I would have followed him whatever genre it was. I mean, it was one of the smartest scripts that I've ever read. And when I talk about detail, I'm, I'm talking about um, past, just descriptive things, but a real love and understanding of the culture and the history and what makes it, what makes Harlem, Harlem. But even in Jessica Jones, uh, Hell's Kitchen, and, and, and all of the Marvel street level heroes, those neighborhoods, they can play not just an important role, they actually are. They, they might as well be on the call sheet, have a number on the call sheet as well. And so I was drawn to that. I, and I have to realize the date, but we bought into Harlem within the last decade. So we're, we're, we're newbies uptown as well, but we went to Harlem because you know, we could have bought anywhere, but we went to Harlem because it had a history. Because you can see the picture of a fine day in Harlem with all the, and all the poets and everything. So for me, uh, and the fact that I got to be, you know, related to and love a complex man because um, 
you know, people, whoever's looking on can call different characters villainous or not, but it's, it's all in, in, in the beholder's eye, or the beholder's mind. And so I love the complexity of that, you know, having to decide, because in everyday life, we all have to, uh, we all, we make ethical judgments all the time, but it's especially cool in in a Marvel universe where there's heroes, obvious heroes, and superheroes, and people that support them, are people who really try to stop them, to still have that that gray area. I just want to dovetail on some stuff you're saying. I, I think, I don't think you can discount how important Harlem is to the story because we live in a time where especially in New York, things are being so quickly gentrified. And so the history of what Harlem represents to black culture, to American culture, but for black people, it was that one place where you could go and you could just catch the vibe. My dad was a New Yorker and I lived in California. So talking the late 70s, early 80s, I'm going to New York every year. And at a certain point, I was old enough to catch the train. I would go, I believe his place from 181st, up in Washington Heights and I'd come down to Harlem and it just rocked my world and you just, you, there, there's just so many things where uh, there's so many cues for 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 how to carry yourself, um, the, the, the cues about it, the information about our, our, our legacy and our culture and whatnot. So for this piece to, to stand and live in Harlem is in some way uh, paying homage to, to a place that has always been so aspirational for people who are not from New York, you know? Um, and, and it's just something that I really appreciate. I'm, I'm so glad that we were able to do this piece and, and touch on that in this time where things are changing so quickly, where at a certain point, no one will know at all what the history of Harlem was in that too. Well, hopefully, that, that, hopefully, hopefully they that's will. what we're hopefully. preserving is like, right. you, you know, <laughs> buy into Harlem, but come to Harlem for Harlem. Don't come up to Harlem and then want to get rid of the drum circle, you know. <laughs> Come to Harlem because it's Harlem. <laughs> How much were you a uh, fan of just comic books, and then what about Luke Cage? Were you a fan of Luke Cage, or is this all new for you? For me, it was all new. I grew up loving sports and hip-hop. You know? um, I, I played basketball in, in college, and I, I wasn't a comic book person, a comic book kid. Um, but I always appreciate good storytelling. You know? And when the films came out, I would go see the films right? in, the, in the, the superhero or fantasy genre. Um, and then as an actor, you start just truly valuing as you grow up and have a career. You just you begin to look at characters and the opportunities within the characters and not so much the genre, whether it's horror or drama or comedy. Uh, just really responding to something that, like I read scripts and some of them just don't speak to me. And it could be a big film making it for $150 million and the character is flat. I'm like, I literally don't know what I can know what to do with it. And this was something that I, I could hear him. I could hear him on the page. And, and to me, that's always a good sign. So, um, yeah, I'm just a fan of good storytelling. So, I'm Lucas Salgado from Adoro Cinema in Brazil. Ah. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering, nowadays with Ghostbusters and the Oscars so wide, how is to be in a show with so much representativity? Well, you know what? It's interesting. I, you know, I, I'm just black all the time, so <laughs> I never. No, I, it sounds crazy, but it's like I never think about it in a way. It's just like you're just busy being yourself, and occasionally, you know, somebody will remind you or something will hit it. But there was one day we were on the set, and it was misty night. Uh, the, the, the what do you call it? The lieutenant of the precinct. Uh, there was our stand-ins. There were three African American actors, women actors, and our stand-ins. And all of a sudden, we were looking at, we were sitting there, we were talking smack in between days. And I went, look at us! Take a picture! Take a picture! Somebody take a picture! Because it was just like I hadn't been in a in a setting like that. I could probably think of years ago, but I hadn't been in that maybe since I was in a play or something. And it, it just struck me like, wow. And it's so it's a thing that you don't think about, but when you when it happens, it feels it feels like home all of a sudden. There's an organic quality to it. So um, I'll tell you what. First of all, people. 
doors are gonna be freaking blown off. They tell me don't swear to shit. The freaking doors gonna be blown off. Wait till you go all the way to the 13th episode. You know, so it ain't gonna matter. You know, it's just it, what it is or who it is. But I'm sure some little brown kid, some little yellow, red, black kid will go, whoa, you know, I must, I must be alive because I, I just saw a reflection of myself. Because when you see yourself on screen, because screen, our anthropology now is that you, you don't exist unless some, there's an image of you somewhere. And so there's this incredible world uh, you know, that is going to open up all of these little people, you know, little tiny young ones watching this to just, you know, but other than that, you know, just like when you're in Jamaica and all the little white kids see the Jamaican Santa, they go, Santa! You know, he's tall and skinny and his shirt is too short. They don't care, they're Santa. So all the little white and Scandinavian kids are going to freak like, Luke, I want to be Luke too. But it just adds flavor. I mean, that's the thing is that... We miss, we, we put ourselves on an irregular diet if we don't have the full range of the food chain of, of what is possible. And so it, it is, uh, it's just one of those instances where it all fell together that, you know, yes, there's a lot of African American people, but yes, there's white people in our club, there's everybody, some of everybody, brown people up in our club, and then people will feel like, what they're looking at reflects the world around them. So they're going to feel represented. They're going to feel respected, I think. There's, there's a scene that you two have in the first episode that's really fascinating and powerful, speaking of race, where the end word gets brought up and you guys talk about it. Um, <laughs> so when you're approaching that scene, how do you approach that? Because it's, you know, it's a very loaded word and it's the first time it pops up in the Marvel Universe. It's, it's loaded for who? What? Well, it's... Loaded for it's who? It's loaded for you. <laughs> it, it has dexterity. <laughs> we got two minutes. <laughs> the word has dexterity in black culture. And, like, you could literally say it one way, one second, and say it a split second later, and it mean a totally different thing in a person. But, um, in terms of just doing the work, I think we, it's, it, it's not something that I don't think either of us had to think about too much. You know, it was as long as you're just being truthful and, and yeah. getting down into what the crux of the scene is. And, but it wasn't anything I, I lost sleep over at night as a result of it. You know. It's like this, my dad, we were not ever allowed to say that word. Ever. We could swear, but you couldn't say that word. It meant something to him, because he grew up where young black boys could be strung up for, you know, looking at you. And so it, it meant another thing. Mine was all like, I, you know, hey, it was, like, it was all this endearment. Was like, so everybody has a different context. So. So you just respect you respect what, how everybody feels. Everybody, you can read it. I mean, you read situations and you respect that. I it's not commented on behind closed doors all the time. In a way, if it if it comes out in the in the public, we have, we have to talk about it, and we probably should talk about it. But behind closed doors, and especially within within black families yeah. that if it does come up like some families are more comfortable using it than others and some definitely don't use the word at all you know but you know, it's it's a complicated thing but it wasn't it's not something that we got Chao actually uses it to make character distinctions that's why he uses it because right. You know, I had to think, I had to act like I had been to me. All right, but it says something about Ryan.